Our new MSP MRR pricing calculator allows you to quickly and easily modify your service and licensing quantities, costs, and margins to ensure you present your prospects and clients with compelling price points that meet your established margin targets. In fact, in order to guarantee you don't erode your service margins, our calculator uses margin as opposed to markup formulas. For instance, if you add a 50% markup to your service cost of $150, your retail price would be $225 with a gross profit of $75 or a margin of 33 and a third percent. Using instead a 50% margin calculation in the same example, our result is a retail price of $300, significantly increasing gross profit. With our calculator, you will always be working with the value that matters most, margin, not markup. Our calculator easily supports your three basic pricing scenarios, or any combination thereof. The first case is your traditional managed services all-you-can-eat model, which includes supporting the client's infrastructure, user devices, and providing end-user support. The next case is an infrastructure-only pricing scenario, where the end users and their devices are not included in your proposal, but instead the core infrastructure in the environment. You may find these scenarios when the client handles user and desktop support in-house and simply needs a higher level of support for their backbone and critical infrastructure. The third case is a monitoring-only scenario where you are deploying your RMM agents to handle patching and updating and billing the client for remediation when needed. Let's now take a deep dive into our calculator to illustrate how to use it. All right, here's our Managed Services MRR pricing calculator. And one of the first things you'll notice when you open it up is at the bottom there are two tabs. The Data tab is where all the action occurs. This is where we're going to do our pricing calculation, etc. And the Instructions tab is simply that, instructions on how to use the calculator, a reminder of what margin versus markup is, and also the unlock code to unprotect the sheets. Now, we don't recommend you unlock the sheets unless you're adding line items to the calculator and modifying it for yourself. And then as soon as you're done with that, we recommend that you protect the sheets again, simply because it makes it very easy to tab between all of the cells that you have access to changing. So all of the formulas are protected. You can't accidentally make a mistake and uh, delete a formula or modify a formula. The next thing you'll notice is the calculator is broken down into specific sections. Here we have an agreement term. This is the term of the agreement that you're pricing, so it can be as short or as long as you wish. There are total help desk supported users, locations, and this is helpful if we are pricing out multiple locations and we add a price for each different location because we're having to manage and maintain VPN tunnels, things like that. Uh, we have a server section which really takes into account your physical as well as your virtual servers here. And we have specific options for managing the hardware, then managing the hypervisors, and then managing each server role. For instance, you may have a price of $199 uh, per month to manage the server hardware, for instance. You may add an additional $99 to manage a hypervisor host, and you may add additional $79 a month to manage an Active Directory or a file or printer application server, etc. All right, scrolling down, we'll see sections for SANS and storage controllers, your storage arrays, and at the end of each section, you'll also see that there is an other for those scenarios or situations where You've got something additional that you want to put in there without wanting to go ahead and modify the calculator itself by unprotecting the sheets and then adding that in here. You can just use the other section. We've got areas for your BDR appliances and for additional online storage here. So for whatever your small, medium, and large BDR appliance costs and retails are. 
uh, remote storage and archiving. Now this is for long-term storage here. So we've got the Azure Blob Cool Storage and Amazon Glacier Storage for archival data. Getting into network devices, firewalls and routers, core switches, edge distribution switches, wireless access points, and their controllers. And then we're covering desktops and laptops, mobile device management for smartphones and tablets, and then a special section for Office 365 licensing, email security, web content filtering, VoIP solutions, three different options here, and then for service management, if you charge for vendor support, for instance, in blocks of five or 10, this allows you to increase your cost in retail to adjust for the number of vendors you'll be supporting under vendor management for your clients. If you're doing any kind of uh, DNS or certificate management for the client, you can also charge for that, specific line of business application support, etc. Down at the very bottom, you'll see we've calculated total MRR per month, total cost per month, and GP per month for you. We also are looking at the total MRR per the agreement. So if it's a 12-month agreement, this will be multiplied by 12, 24, 36, etc. Also the cost and your total GP for the life of the agreement. And then we've got a per user MRR per month, uh, cost per month, and then GP per month. Uh, at the very top, you'll see quantities here in column C, costs in D, then we subtotal those out in E, and we've got a default margin set for you for 50%, but again, as we go through the pricing scenario, we'll be able to judge and tweak the margins, even down to individual services or products, to make sure that we fit within that budget that the client has expressed or that we've given them a sense for. So let's go ahead and price an agreement. So we're going to go with a 36 month agreement and I can just simply tab and I'm going to support uh, 25 users, obviously our sweet spot. Now remember we have three scenarios that we can price. The first is the all you can eat scenario which means we're going to be providing service desk for the client environment. So that's where I'm going to add my cost to support the users on the help desk. And let's say that my fully burdened cost to support a user based on ticket load and things like that comes out to, oh, let's, let's just put $100 in there. And that's going to calculate at my margin. It's going to give me my retail cost. So $100 times 50% margin obviously gives me $200. And then that calculates out times the users. So that's $5,000 just to support that user environment from a help desk perspective. Might be a little high. Maybe we need to look at bringing our costs down. Or we may have to tweak our margin a little bit. And you'll notice as we keep adding items here, one location, I'm going to include that in my pricing, so I'm not going to charge extra for it. But as we adjust our, our margins here, you'll start to see this average margin number under the margin header begin to change. So you'll see what I mean once we get through some of this. So let's say that there's two physical servers here. My cost is $99 a month. I'm going to increase that by 50%. So I'm charging $198 per month to manage those servers. Let's say that there's no virtual environment here. So one is an Active Directory domain controller and one's a file and print server. My cost to manage those is $49 a month, respectively, based upon ticket count, historical load, and industry statistics telling us how much time we're going to invest per month to manage servers, and industry statistics telling us how many tickets per user per year we should expect. That's how we come up with some of these costs here. Okay, I'm going to leave everything else the way it is. And I'm going to say that there's uh, no storage array. I'm going to land a small BDR appliance. And my cost for the BDR may be $89 per month I'm with my 50% margin. And we're going to give them some additional online storage for the BDR in terabytes. So how much is that? Let's just call it uh, 10 terabytes. And let's say that our cost per terabyte is a dollar. We're not doing any kind of archiving for this particular client, but they do have a router, a firewall, uh, a router, and a firewall. So let's put two in there, and let's say my cost to manage those is 79 a month. There's two core switches there, and let's call that 29 a month to manage those, our cost. And there's two wireless access points, 19 a month and no access point control. It's a very small environment here. Now this uh, desktop and laptop in this scenario where we're providing end-user support through help desk, we've got a, a fee up, up at the top for that. This 
fee then covers my RMM agent tool costs, right? The remote monitoring, patching, and updating license. So I'm going to say uh, there's 25 users, there's 25 devices for desktops slash laptops. Well, let's say there's 30. Let's say there's five extra laptops. And my cost per agent is $8. So I'm, I want to make sure that I'm capturing that. Now we're going to come back and tweak some of these margins because as you can tell, that's quite a lot of retail costs just for 30 monitoring needs. But maybe not. We'll come back and take a look. Mobile device management, we're not going to do anything here for the client, but we are going to introduce Office 365 Business Premium to the client. Let's just say our cost is $12 per license. And here's one where we know that we can't really increase by 50% our margin because the client can go direct and get those licenses less expensively. So let's just put an 8% margin on that. And we're going to do a simple email security, whatever your simple security offering is. And let's say that our cost for that license is $12 a month. Web content filtering, sure why not. And let's say our cost is $9 a month. We're not going to do any VoIP. We're going to do vendor support for five vendors, but that's going to be included in our package, so we're not going to charge any extra for that and that should complete our pricing exercise. So let's take a look at what our totals are here. Our total MRR per month, this is what we will be charging the clients, over $8,000 for 25 users, so that's a little bit high. Uh, so let's go up and see what we can do to bring that cost down a little bit. I think this is probably an unrealistic cost to manage uh, those users. So I'm going to drop that a little bit, but I'm also going to maybe decrease my margin on on help desk support to 40%. And as you can see, that's such a big portion of our total cost. Just by reducing that to 40%, it reduced our overall margin to 43.25%. So let's see where else we have an opportunity to sharpen our pencil. Let's take a look at the bottom here. Now we're at about $5,000. So let's see where else we can sharpen our pencil. Obviously, we can reduce some of these margins. And again, we're reducing our margin steadily here at the top, our aggregate margin, if you will. The BDR appliance, okay, let's come down a little bit on that. 50% on the licensing for the RMM tool. We can certainly, we certainly have room there, so let's drop that a little bit, see how close we get. I can continue to uh, sharpen my pencil until I get to the price point that I feel is within the client's budget meets their expectation, and also provides me a nice healthy margin for the lifetime of this agreement. So uh, let's just see where we are now. Wow, look at our total GP for this agreement over three years, $71,000. Lifetime client value can be increased substantially if we're doing our quarterly business reviews effectively to continue to grow that lifetime client value. Now, if I like, I can save this and file it in the client's file so I can pull it up later as a reminder of how I priced this for them.